All right, we're going to get started. Um, give me a quick little story first. Hopefully, it'll be fast. Years ago, when I applied for the position at Blackhawk Technical College in Wisconsin that I ended up teaching at for about for over 20 years, um, I got the interview, and I knew, you know they said you got to do a dog and pony show, which meant they wanted me to go out and do a lecture so they could see what I was like in the classroom type of an idea. And I said, okay, fine, what's it gonna be on? And they told me, and I said, fine. And it was on a language that I'd used about 10 years earlier, but I, you know, I didn't remember it at all. So I called up their bookstore and I asked what book they used for the class. And the lady laughed and she said, uh, well, we use this book, but it's the middle of the semester. We don't have any more copies, but this is the book. So I contacted the publisher and long story short, I got a copy of the book very quickly from them. Okay, it cost me a little bit of money, but I did. Read the book over the weekend, literally made a, a word perfect document where I did a synopsis of each chapter that was in the book. So I, and then I went and made a dozen copies of it. All right, and the, the, the synopsis was about 100 pages. So you can tell I did a little bit of work. So I go in there to give the interview and I said, okay, everybody pull out your books. And they're all looking at me like, what the hell are you talking about? Pull out your books. I said, you don't have your books? So I gave everybody one. Now, I ended up becoming pretty close to a couple of the people who interviewed me. One of the guys who interviewed me was an accounting teacher and he said, you got the job right there. You, you had it, it was yours to lose, all right? So why am I even telling you that? Well, as time went on, okay, that wasn't good enough. And for a while, they wanted us to basically read you PowerPoints, which I always thought was a waste of my time and a waste of your time. All right, so I fought against that. And for lack of better words, let's just say I won. But then we needed, we, we had a lot of people who would miss class for whatever reason. It could be a valid reason, it could be an invalid reason. It wasn't like it is here where you get an X number of absences. I mean, I had people who missed 50% of the time. So what I ended up doing was I got my own YouTube channel, all right? And then I got that here too, and I've shown this to you before. So if you put, put in Jeff Scott Rankin Technical College and you go to here, notice there's 106 subscribers and there's just about 1,700 videos. So this one is gonna be the 1,700th, all right? But for example, if you look, this is what I did yesterday. All right, so if you weren't here yesterday, I sent you an email letting you know what, what, what the URL is for this. Well, time marches on. That's not good enough anymore. All right, so if you've noticed in the last few weeks, a couple times I've had to take these meetings where I put the headphones on because they want us to use Microsoft Teams. Now, what is that? Basically, it's kind of a glorified Zoom meeting where I'm able to not only tape this, but let's say today it was even worse than it is outside. You could remote in from home and you could watch everything from my machine as we're doing things. Now, I have not done a good enough job. I mean, I, I sit there and, and uh, these presentations come up and to be honest with you, I don't really pay that much attention to them. So I haven't gotten very good at Microsoft Teams, but I have to get good at Microsoft Teams, all right? And I just sent out for a book, Microsoft Teams for Educators, and I've been following some of these lessons online. But again, what I'm trying, what I'm gonna to try to do in the next couple of weeks is set up that for this class. So James, you know, doesn't feel well. You know, shouldn't be coming in because you're not supposed to come in here if you don't feel well, all right? So he can remote in from home and see everything that you're seeing. That's what we're gonna to have to do, all right? I'm gonna to have to get better than where I am right now. Because like I said, they don't consider that what I've been doing is to be good enough. All right, so with all that said, what we're going to do today is we're gonna write three different programs. The first program we, we write is going to use arrays. It's gonna be pretty simple. Um, it's not gonna have that many lines, but you're gonna do some typing today. I just gotta warn you, you're gonna, and I'm gonna do the same thing. I've got hard copies, but I'm gonna retype everything. All right, so what I'd like you to do as we start is to, if you're not in there already, get into Visual Studio and let's create a new project. 
All right, the first one that we create will be a console app. If I'm going too fast, stop me, please. So I'm going to go in for console app and I'm going to click next. Now, one thing about this, we don't want we don't want the solution name to be the same as the project name. Did you all hear me? We don't want them to be the same. So I'm going to save this right onto my desktop. All right, and I'm going to call this first one Array Console. Call it what it is. All right, and I'm going to change the name of the solution to Array Demos. So I'm going to have a solution called Array Demos, and that Array Demos is going to have three different projects inside of it. The first one that we create, which is going to be called Array Console. The second one that we create, which is going to be called Array GUI. And the third one that we create, which is going to be called Array List Console. Does that make sense to everyone? And you could, you'll be able to use these, hopefully, as you're doing the homework. So if you've got questions on what to do and how to do it, you've got something you can fall back on. All right? So this Array Console, and again, Array Demos is what I call the solution. So make sure this is unchecked right there and just click Create. And you've seen this already because this is going to create the shell of a really simple console app that's only going to have in it a hello world. All right. We're going to put our one line in at the top, which we've been putting in, which is using static system.console, just because it's a little less typing on our part. And then we're going to come in here and we're going to remove that line that's right there. All right. So right now, if we ran it, absolutely nothing would show on the screen because there's nothing, there's no code inside of main. Now, I'm going to put all of my code in main. I'm not worried right now about modularizing this, etc. We could modularize it. Really probably should have modularized this, but I didn't. It will be expected that when you do your next test, if you're told to modularize, I want you to modularize. All right, I'm going to give back the tests at the end of the period today. And let's let's break away for just a second and talk about the tests. All right, you got six points on each problem. So that's 12 out of 150 points. So that's approximately 8%, something like that, okay? That was just for coming in and setting the tab order, as you've been shown in class, setting the accept button, and setting the, the Windows default position. Probably half the people in this class did not do that. And you got no points then. If you didn't do any of them, you got zero points for that. So that was 12 points right there. If you used the naming conventions that we've used, either called it label something or LBL or whatever, that was like four or six points. All right, so right there, between the two problems, that was at least 20 points out of 150. And there was another like five points on each for just using right variable names. So right there, that was 20% of your test. Now, fortunately or unfortunately, there are people in this room who didn't take advantage of that. So you lost points. All right. And, you know, for instance, a, a couple of you even did the program one or both correctly, but you were told on there that you should, like, for example, for the first one, you should have two methods show invoice and whatever the heck the other one was so even if you got it to work but you didn't write a show invoice you lost some points you know part of being able to to go through this program is following directions all right and if you do have questions on anything by all means please ask please all right so let's go in here and start writing so i'm going to have one constant so i'm going to put in here declare and initialize program constant. There's just one. Now, what I'm about to show you, you don't have to do this, but normally when people work with arrays, they create a constant that's called max or len for length or something like that. And I just called mine max. So I said const int max equal 25 and I put a comment there that said number 
of array elements. Now, none of you should really have a question about that. That means that we're about to create an array, soon we'll be creating an array, and that array will have 25 things that it'll hold. And those 25 things will each be a number. And they'll each be a random number that's between 1 and 100. Does that make sense to everyone? All right. I didn't put zero in here. This is not a program on grades. This is just a program with a bunch of numbers. So next I said declare and initialize program variables. All right. And I had about a half dozen. So the first thing we did was we created the array. And I just called it numbers. Equal, new, int. And there's this is where that max comes in, is right there. So numbers array. Next, int smallest. And I just set that equal to zero. And that what is that? That's our smallest number that we have. That's all it is. Nothing special about the name or anything else but we're going to put here smallest value in array then we're going to have int largest and as you probably guess it's going to say largest value in array all right hopefully that just makes sense without having to say really anything else about it And we're going to figure those out later. All right. We're going to have another int in here. Sum. That's equal to zero. And that'll be the sum of all array elements. Now, the good news is, you know, because I always have people say this kind of stuff to me. Well, I can't do math. You don't have to do any math. The program's going to do all the math for us. All right, all we have to do is put in the programmatic statements. All right, we'll have two more variables. We're not going to have a keep going in here. There'll be nothing like that, but we'll have a double that'll be called average. Oops. And that'll be the average array element size, value, whatever you want to put. It doesn't really matter. And then finally, we're going to have a string that I just called out string, out str. And I'm going to set that equal to the empty string. And that's just going to be our output string. That's it. Nothing special again about that. Now, and I'm asking, please be honest with me. Is there anything that's in here so far? It doesn't make sense to anyone. We're going to read in 20, we're going to create 25 numbers. They're going to be held inside of this thing called numbers. But then we're going to go through that list of 25 numbers and we're going to pick out the smallest. We're going to pick out the largest. We're going to add all 25 together and put it in the sum. Then we're going to take that sum and divide it by 25 to give us the average. Any questions on any of that? All right. Now, when you work with random numbers, because we really haven't done anything with random numbers, one thing to realize is by default, which means unless told otherwise, when you work with random numbers, random number, random number programs are designed to give you a random number that's greater than or equal to zero, but less than one. Every random number that every language that I know of works like that. You might say, well, we want numbers between one and 100. Yeah, we'll have to change those. But that's what it does by default. It's a number that's greater than or equal to zero, and it's less than one. So it could be 0.999999867 or something like that. All right? But what you typically do is you do what's called seed the rand. All right? And again, all that means is, and this is the first time we're actually doing something that sort of looks object-oriented.
So what we're doing right there in that line in line 22 is we are creating, we are telling the system to create a new object. That new object is called RAND and it is of type random number. All right, there is a random class. So we are right there. That is object oriented code, just so you know. That is instantiating a new instance of the random class, which is called RAND. This is a lot of what you're going to be doing when we get to chapter 12. All right, it's not a warning, it's not a threat, it's just the truth. All right, now we're going to go into a for loop. And in that for loop, we're going to generate a random number, give it to an array location, a random number to an array location. So sometimes when you see arrays that are shown like this, and you put a values, you know, each one of these, sometimes they're shown like this. And you see them like this. Bottom line is it doesn't matter because it really doesn't look like either one. All right. It's not really physically possible for you to go in and draw a picture of computer memory. All right. So those are more or less, for lack of better words, they're like artist renditions. But if you can imagine, and I'll draw it this way. So I'll put it way the hay over here. And I'm not going to make it 25. I'll make it five. But imagine there were 25 of these. So the, the computer can only understand ones and zeros. So let's say the first one is 23. That's not actually what gets put in there. All right? Really what would be put in there would be one. Let's see. One, two, something like this. That. That's the kind of value that would be put in there that would represent 23, all right? But the point is, what we're going to do in here right now is we're going to generate values and we're going to put them into 25 memory locations, all right? And it's real simple to do. We put a for loop and the for loop will only have one line of code inside of it, all right? So for, again, I typically call my loop control variable LCV for loop control variable start it at zero and say while it's less than while it is less than the name of our array which is numbers dot length plus plus lcv now we're to the point this has to make sense to you so again if it doesn't let me know and if i can't help you let Gabriel there know, and he'll work with you on it because he is a class tutor. If there's something that you don't get, because I think he's, he, judging by the way he did on the test, he gets this. All right? So don't be afraid. If you want a tutor, there's no shame in having a tutor. There's no cost to you in having a tutor, and he gets paid for being a tutor. All right. So the one line of code that we put in here is we say numbers. LCV, that means the current array location is equal to rand.next 1, 100. Now, this is not the only way to create a random number. Did you all hear me? There are other ways of doing it. I tried to use the most straightforward means possible. So this says, give me an integer that's between 1 and 100. And that's all this is doing. Now, I'm not going to print this out, but if we printed this out right now, that's exactly what you'd see in there. All right? Would be that. So we've done that, and that's fine. Now, if we let, let's say we do want to print it out. So let's, let's put a comment here that says, print out the array in its original order. All right? So what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to put in another another for loop. Oops, I'm going to put in another for loop. It won't be the same as this one, but I'm going to copy it because I'm lazy. So I'm going to put it right there. All right. And now what I'm going to do is, no, I don't want to generate random numbers. I want to say this. I'm going to say my, our output string. What do we call it? Out str, I think. So out str plus equals numbers LCV 
plus a blank space. So if you can imagine wow. inside of those right here, if I had 23, eight, et cetera. So if I had 25 of those numbers, it's gonna print a number, then a space, then a number, then a space, then a number, then a space, 25 times. It's going to print all 25 of those numbers. Does that make sense to everyone? And I'm sorry if I sound like I'm harping. All right, there again, but but there are there are people who didn't do well on this test, but there were basic things that I think they actually know that they didn't do. All right. Now that's all fine, and outstring now holds all 25 of those numbers, but I want to write them out. So I'm going to say here right line out str. Now, even if you're still typing, just stop for a second and look up on the screen here, because I'm running it. So there it is. There's the numbers in their original order right there. I realize they're not that easy to see, but you should be able to run it on yours just as well. All right, in fact, if it makes it easier for you, and it might, I'm gonna put in here, array in original, order backslash n oops plus out string and i don't have to convert that with two string it's already a string but that might make it a little bit easier so if i run this now it now says array in original order and there's your numbers and if you run this a multiple number of times you should get different values in there each time because we are coming up with 25 random numbers. All right, questions? And I'm, gonna, I'm doing this very deliberately, all right? And the good news is we're more than a third of the way done with, with this one, all right? So that's all fine. So we've got 25 random numbers. Now let's come in and let's sort the array in ascending order. All right, and then we're gonna print it out when we're done. Okay, not hard, not hard at all, because you say array dot sort. Did you notice, if you look up on the screen here, if I say array dot, notice how it's blue? So it says, oh, there's an array class. So as soon as I hit period, it shows me all the stuff that's available here. And notice if I work my way through, we have both sort and we have reverse. And there's two sorts and there's two reverses. The regular sort is a numeric sort and the other one is a textual sort. Same thing with reverse, all right? But I just wanna use this regular sort here. So array.sort, Okay, and it's giving me an error because it says sort what? So I have to tell it what to sort. It's our array called numbers. So that's what we want to do. All right, now I'm going to grab this whole thing that we just put in there and I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste it down here. And now this is going to say, so we just sorted it, print out the array in its sorted ascending order. And I'm gonna do the same exact thing that we just did. Now there's only one problem. If you look, if you listen for a second, right now that outstring still holds the, the ones that we had in there earlier. Do you understand what I'm saying? Outstring holds the 25 that we put in there originally. We don't want that anymore. So before we do this, we'll say out str equals double quote, double quote. We'll set it back equal to the empty string. All right, now, if this worked and I run it, there it is in original order and there it is in sorted order. You can see the difference. And I realize it's hard for you guys to see, but you should be able to run it on yours and see the difference. All right, I'm gonna add a couple just so, you know, to, to make it a little easier to read backslash ends in here. All right, and run it again. 
maybe that makes it a little easier. So there's the array in original order, and there it is in sorted order. You notice, if you look at mine, and your numbers will be different, but my numbers are 115666. We said nothing about repeats. Repeat numbers are totally fine in here. All right, so that's that. And what am I going to do next? I'm going to guess what? I'm going to grab this whole thing that we just did. I'm going to copy it to the clipboard. I'm going to paste it in. And now I'm going to say, sort the array in descending order. So an array dot reverse of numbers. And all I'm doing in, instead of, well, that said original. So this should have said ascending. And this will say, descending and if i run it i should now have my array three times the original order in ascending order and in descending order now if you came in late or if you're having a hard time keeping up i'll be happy to print out a copy of this when we're done but i want you to key it in because it's only going to make sense if you key it in So what have we done so far? Again, we've we've done it in ascending order. We've done it in descending order. Everybody with me? So what did we say at the beginning? Well, we didn't even say ascending or descending, but we said we wanted to find the smallest. We wanted to find the largest. We wanted to find the sum. And we wanted to find the average. You all with me? All right. Now, what I'm doing here, just so you know, I'm doing everything in its own loop. Would you agree with that? I'm doing everything in its own for loop. Technically, we could have done everything in the same loop. We could have done it all in there. If you decide to do it like that, then in that for loop, you should be calling methods, like one called sort array ascending, another sort array descending, etc. Does that make sense to everyone? That's writing good code. All right. Years ago, I had a student who was up for an internship I don't know if there's any farm and fleets in, in Missouri, but it, it's a hardware store, okay? And they're pretty big in Wisconsin and in some other Midwestern states. They're in Illinois too, I know. And he was up for a job. He, ended up, he eventually ended up getting hired there. But I asked the guy, because he asked me if I'd come in for the interview with him. And they said, can you bring in some of his code? And I couldn't believe the guy spent a half an hour of the interview looking at this guy's code. And I'm not exaggerating. And he said, oh, you can comment. That's good. Oh, you can write things in a modularized way. That puts you ahead of a lot of our programmers. And I talked to the guy five years later, and he was still working there. I have no idea if he still is or not. All right. But the point is, those are good programming habits that fortunately or unfortunately, you know, fortunately, a lot of people go by them. And unfortunately, a lot of people don't. All right. So I'm just putting each one of these in its own loop so there's one loop that's going to you know i'll put in here fill the array with 25 random numbers all right so that's what that for loop is doing then print it out in its original order then print it out in its ascending order then print it out in its descending order all right and that's sorted descending order okay Questions so far? Anything that doesn't make sense? This is the time that you can ask. All right. So what do we have left? Well, now we want to come in and find our smallest and our largest and our average. Does all that make sense? Smallest, average, and smallest, largest, and average. And after we've done that, as far as I know, yep, we're done with this program. So what I am going to do when I get done with this program, I'm going to take it and I'm going to modularize it. Why? Because that's a better way of writing it. All right. So I'm going to come in here and again, I'm going to grab my loop and make a copy of this and paste it in there again. And now I'm going to say, print out the smallest array element. Okay. Now, right now it's not going to do very much and I don't want to do this. But I want to say if, if, 
the current array element, all right, and what is that? That's numbers, LCV, oops, if that is less than smallest, what do I know? What do I know? If that if is true, somebody tell me, please, what do I know? That's exactly right. There's a new smallest. So, smallest equals numbers LCV. Now, do you remember at the beginning? Do you remember at the beginning? We said that all the numbers are going to be between 1 and 100. Does everybody remember that? Well, go back up to the top of your program. That's right. Should never set it to that. Because it's zero is going to remain the smallest. What we should do is grab the biggest number we have, which is 100, add one to it. That way we're sure that it's going to be replaced right away. So this will be 101. That is our new smallest to start with. So the first time through there, let's say we get 100. 100 is less than 101, so the first time through, 100 will become the smallest number. Does that make sense? All right. What some people do. So what if you say, I don't want to do that. I don't, I don't like that. I don't like what you just did. Is there another way of doing it? The answer is yes. So let me show you another way that you could do it. All right. So I could have come in here and I could have said this. So right down here, we could have come in and done this. We could have said smallest equals numbers zero. That's the first one. All right. In fact, we just did it in descending order, right? We just did it in descending order. So no, we want it to be max minus one. That's the last one. We could have done it that way and then checked through it. So there's a bunch of ways that this could be done. I'm showing you what I'm considered to be the most straightforward way of doing it. All right. So now I can put my right line in here. And I can just say the small smallest array element. All right. And now I don't need this. There's no out string. I'm just going to put smallest. So I'm going to run it again. And it's got my array in original order. That looks good. My array in ascending order. That looks good. My array in descending order. That looks good. All right. Notice there is the smallest one. There is the largest one. You see that? So if we wanted to, if we had wanted to do this, after we put it in ascending order, we could have just said smallest is equal to numbers zero. And then we wouldn't have had to even make any checks. If we wanted the largest, after we put it in descending order, we could have said largest is equal to number zero. And we wouldn't have had to do anything else. Does that make sense? All right. Now, the, the thing about that is, in just a minute, and the reason I'm doing it in the way I'm doing it is in, after the break, we're going to write this again, and we're going to write it as a GUI. And when it's a GUI, you have no control over what button the user is going to press first. Here, we've got total control. So we could have done it like that with no problem. All right? But when we do this in a couple of minutes, we're not going to be able to do that. All right? So we now have that. Does it make sense to everybody? Please look up on the screen that this, we can copy this, and we have to change what? That word is to largest, that word, that a greater than, that to largest, and that to largest, and that to largest. Does that make sense? So instead of checking for the smallest value, we want to check for the biggest value. That's why I made the copy. Or maybe I didn't make it yet, but I'm going to. So control C to copy, control V to paste, and now I want the largest array element. 
So of numbers, if it's greater than largest, we know that it's got a new largest. And this will also be largest. And this will be largest. And as Gabriel so well pointed out just a couple minutes ago, now we're going to go back up to here. And largest, we can keep it at zero. We can because one is our smallest number. So we can 100% we can be guaranteed that the first time we go through this, largest will be our first value, and so will smallest as we go check through the array. Does that make sense to everyone? So I'm going to save this, and I'm going to run it again. So now I've got my array in original order, my array in ascending order, my array in descending order, my smallest element, and my largest element. And if you look up on the screen here, notice the only ones that still have the squigglies are sum and average. So let's do those. And sum is really easy. So I can grab any of these, but I'll just grab the last one. All right, the last one that we put in here. And let's see, smallest, smallest, print out the I'm going to grab that one. I have to make a couple changes to it, but not many. So I'm going to paste that in. And now, instead of print out the largest array element, I'm going to put out, put in, print out the sum of all array elements. I guess I had it there already. And I'm going to do the same kind of thing we did before, but now there's no if. This is real simple. Sum plus equals the current array element. You already know what that is. You don't need that curly. Now I'm asking you, does that make sense? That's literally looping through. Imagine we had an array, let's keep it small, five numbers. 53, 47, 12, 5, and 10. It would be 53 plus 47 plus 12 plus 5 plus 10. That would be the sum. All right, so I'll change this to the sum of all array elements, and this will become sum. Now, if this is a truly random number program, if it's truly random, the sum should be approximately 1,250, because that's 50 times 25. Does that make sense to everyone? Now, it's never probably, very rarely is going to be 1250, but it should be somewhere around there. If I keep running it and I'm getting numbers like, uh, like if it was 99 every time, so if I get numbers like 2500 or something around there, there's something wrong with the program. So let's take a look at what we've got. So I'm going to save and run it again. And it's got all of my stuff. And now it says the sum is 1391. All right, so the only thing that's left to do is the average. All right, and I'm again just going to copy what we just did, and I'm going to paste it down here. All right, and this is going to say print out the average. I think we called it AVG, but I'm not positive. Yep, AVG. All right, that's simple too. In that, all we have to do in there, we, there's no loop. We just say the average is equal to the sum, which we just calculated, divided by numbers dot length. And there's a problem with this right now. What's the problem? What am I dividing right here? Somebody tell me, what am I dividing right here? The answer is I'm dividing an int by an int. So I'm going to take my sum and I'm going to cast it as a double. And none of you said this, and I should have seen this, but really for good programming practice, we should have come in here and said in all these, so we should the output string was fine here and that's fine there. But here, once we got the smallest, I should have said smallest dot to string. Oops. It still works fine if you don't do it. It worked fine, but it's considered proper programming practice to do that.
Now, this will say the average, but this one I do want to change because I can get some god-awful number. How do I know that? Because a bunch of you did on your test when you were doing the average. All you have to do in here is to come in and say F2. And that's it. That says two decimal places. So no matter how big it is, it's going to round it or change it off to two decimal places. Now, what should have happened here is I should now have nothing in here that's got the squigglies anymore. All right? When you look, the author will say in here, if, if notice how this is gray, and it says unnecessary assignment of value to average, that it says by default it's going to set it to that anyway. I don't care. I initialize all my variables anyway. And I've said this to you before. If something goes wrong with your program, if you are 100% able to verify and prove that it's not what you did, it's what the software did. Your bosses don't give a rat's ass. They don't. It's still your fault. And they'll come back and say, Gabriel, why didn't you initialize those variables if that was the problem? So I have. So maybe that's a little redundant. Maybe it's making the, the program run a little slower. I don't know. To be honest with you, I don't care. All right. So I'm going to save this and I'm going to run it one last time. And now I have in here, there's my original array. There it is in ascending order. There it is in descending order. There is my smallest. There is my largest. There is my sum. There is my average. All right. Does anyone have any questions over anything that we've just done? Yes. So, order? Then what you want to do, if you're only getting it descending order, you want to make sure that you check the test that you made for the smallest and make sure you're saying less than smallest in there. And if it's still, if you say that's what I typed in and it's wrong, then I'd have to take a look at it. Then it's probably just grabbing either the first or the last array element that's in there. But you need to put an if in there. All right. Now, I wasn't going to do this, but I am going to do this. And that is, I'm going to take this. First of all, is there anybody else who tried to run it and had problems? Do you need me to put any part of the program back up again so you can copy it? Maybe you were a little slow in typing it in. Anybody? All right. Then what I'm going to do is I'm literally going to grab every bit of code that I just put inside of main. And I don't this I'm doing off the top of my head. So if I screw it up, I'm apologizing in advance. All right, so that's everything that's in main right there. I'm going to copy it to the clipboard. I've got everything in main copied to the clipboard. Now I'm going to close this. I'm going to right mouse click on here on my solution, and I'm going to choose add new project. All right. And I'm going to call this, even though it's a crummy name, I'm going to call this array console two. All right. And I'm going to attempt to go in and take what we just did and modularize it. Are you all with me? Now, if you don't want if you if you want to just watch rather than following along, I'll print out a copy of this one for you. All right. And then we'll we'll be taking a break soon. But I'm going to see if I can quickly modularize this. So there's everything. So now it's virtually the same program as before, except I need my using static system dot console at the top. That's why I'm getting all those errors. Boom. They all went away except for a couple. Okay. Well, at the end, for some reason, I didn't copy in my last right line. So that's, that's goofed up. And that was the thing for average. So somehow I didn't highlight all of it. And that's on me. All right, so I'm just going to grab this whole right line that was there and close that, go back to here, and replace that right line that's in there with this. So now if I run it, right now if I run what I've got, I've just made a copy. So I've got another, another copy of the program. Does that make sense to everyone? All right. But I want to modularize it. Why? 
because you've been told on your test to modularize, so really I should be doing it as well. <clears throat> and in an ideal world, what we're going to do now is this. Look up on the screen. We're going to write it in what I consider to be a good way. In other words, this is what we're going to end up doing um, with our program. Okay, just starting at the top. I'm going to get a bunch of errors, so don't worry about that. We'll fix them in just a minute. But starting at the top here, come on, get back up there. There we go. Starting at the top, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to do this. I'm going to call fill array, and I'm going to pass in the name of the array, which is numbers. All right. Then I'm going to sort. In fact, let's, I'm going to call this fill numbers array. And then I'm going to call sort numbers array ascending, and I'm going to pass it numbers. Then I'm going to call sort numbers array descending, and I'm going to pass it numbers. And you know what? I, I mentioned this to you before. After I put it in ascending order, I can just figure out my smallest right away. Does that make sense? Because then there'll be less code that I have to write. All right, so I'm going to say here, uh, find smallest array, well, they all have numbers in there, so numbers array element, and I'm going to pass in numbers. Then after this, I'm going to call find largest numbers array element, and again, I'm going to pass in numbers. All right, then I'm going to call um, find sum numbers array, and I'm going to pass in numbers. Then I'm going to call find average, AVG, numbers array, and I'm going to pass in numbers. All right, now I've got a question for you. If you look on the screen, everybody, please. Do you notice what's redundant in here? Don't say nothing. What word is in every one of those lines? What word is in every one of these lines? Numbers. numbers. This would be a case where you could say numbers should really be global. Does that make sense to everyone? Then I don't have to worry about passing it. There's no firm and fast rule, but the point is every single one of these routines needs numbers. So if there was ever a time for making numbers global, I would say that's it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back up to the top and where I've got in bracket bracket numbers here, I'm going to copy these lines and I'm going to put it before main right there. So this will say now declare and initialize global program variable. So that's outside of there now, which means what? Well, it's going to mean a couple things. First of all, it doesn't understand max, right? So max will have to be brought out there. All right, and this is going to give me some errors, so don't worry about it. We'll fix them in a second. And I no longer need this int numbers. I don't need that anymore. But I'm going to get errors in here probably eventually because these things are working with something that's in main. So I think I'm going to have to write in here, not, not, not for the constant, but for this, I'm probably going to have to write the word static in there. If I don't, I'm probably going to end up getting an error. We'll see. All right. So now I've got all my variables, all my stuff is basically, not quite, but pretty much is set up now. All right. Everything that I want to do in here Except now I don't need to pass numbers anymore. Notice how numbers isn't highlighted? All right, I don't even know if it was before or not, but boom, I can get rid of it in all of these. Everybody with me? And just for now, I'm going to highlight all of this. I'm going to highlight every line. I'm going to go up here right by my search, okay, and right to the right of where that search icon is, I'm going to click, and that commented all that out. 
and I'm going to bring them back in one at a time. All right. So the first one I want to do is I want to fill the numbers array. Well, I've already got that, right? So I'm going to come down here. And outside of main, I'm going to put in here static, void. I don't remember what we called it. I think it was fill numbers array, but fill numbers array. Fill numbers array. And now I'm going to put that in. Now, it doesn't like this. It doesn't like rand. So what does that mean? Well, I'm only using it there. So I'm going to grab that seed the rand and I'm going to move it. From where it currently is, I'm going to move it right into this routine. Because what that does is it's putting code where it should be put. All right. And then, like I said, if you're just watching, I'll be happy to run this off when we get all done. All right. Let's see if that still works. Now, I haven't moved any of the other stuff yet, but I want to see if that still works. Well, array in original order. So I'm still getting that. That's good. I didn't break anything yet. You should always check. What I've been trying to show you today is, oh, I guess it was, wasn't even calling it yet. So there it is. Let's try it now. And Mr. Scott? Yes. It looks like uh, we messed up on what you did on the descending order. OK. All right. We can go back and take a look at that in just a sec. Okay. All right. We haven't broken anything yet. That's a good thing. All right, let's go back then. And in our descending order, we did right there. We did an array dot reverse. All right. Okay, so, so far we've done the fill numbers array. Now we want to do sort numbers array ascending. So I'm going to put that right underneath the one I just put in here. So static void. All right. And now I go, I'm going to come up here to where I've got that code right there. Print out the array in its original order. Well, we didn't print that out yet. So I, I can. I can move that where we said print out the array in its original order. I can grab all that code, and I got two choices now. I can make that its own method, or I can just put it, put it in the method where I am, the one I've written already. I'm going to do that. Right here. So that will print out the array in its original order. Why am I getting an error? Be because it doesn't know that outString exists. So string out str and the error is gone now since i used plus equal here it expects this to initially be init to be initialized so all i have to do is say equals double quote double quote just like that and that error is gone now for the sort numbers ascending i'm all i'm doing is just grabbing my code i've already done and i'm moving it around so i'm going to grab this all the way through here and I'm going to put it down here. All right. And it still doesn't like out string. So again, string out str equals double quote, double quote. All right. That fixed that one. So now I've got no errors. So now I'm going to find the smallest one. And this is even easier than it was before. This is even easier than it was before. All right, and what do I mean? Well, it's easier to show you. Now, I would be much better off writing comments, many more than I've written in here, but I think hopefully at least you're getting the idea. All right, so there was our smallest. All right, and now hopefully you'll see why modularizing can be a nice thing and why you know doing things in the right order can be a nice thing what am i talking about all right we don't need an out string 
We don't need any of this. All we have to say is the smallest element is numbers zero dot to string. That's the whole routine. And our largest one is going to look just the same, except that there it's going to say largest. That's a good way to write code. All right. So we've got that. Now, the only thing is we're not keeping a permanent copy of smallest. Do you understand what I'm saying? We're not keeping a permanent copy. If we wanted to, we could do that. But I don't see any reason for doing that. That also means that coming up here, we don't need smallest anymore. We don't need that. And in just a minute, try it again. In just a minute, where are we? We're not going to need largest. All right. So we've got that. Now it's giving me an error here. Find smallest, and it's telling me, oh, guess, guess what the problem is? These have to all have static before them. Notice I put static, but here I wrote private. That should say static. That'll fix the error. All right. And it says here the name smallest does not exist in the current context because we don't need this anymore. All right. Now this was descending order, and maybe there are even mistakes in here. I don't know, but I'm getting rid of this anyway. I don't need this. All right, so all this thing in here that says uh, print it out in descending order, etc. Find the smallest, we don't need it anymore. All that's gone. Find the largest, we don't need that anymore. That's gone. That's gone. All of that's gone. All right, so now that we found the smallest, We've filled the array. We've sorted it in ascending. We found the smallest. Now we can sort it in descending. All right. So let's write that and then just copy the code over. So again, static, void, sort, numbers, array, descending. Hopefully I didn't spell anything wrong. All right. Let's come back up here and look. Sort numbers array descending. Well, it's not doing anything yet, so that's why probably. But they're sorting the array in descending order and printing it out. So again, I'm copying all that down. And I am pasting it in here. It still doesn't like that out string. So string out str equals double quote, double quote. All right. And it's telling me that it does not exist in the current context. So let's look. Sort numbers array descending. Static void, static void. Static void, stoit, sort. No, it's numbers array descending, not number. So all my errors are gone. Now I can find the largest array element. All right. And I'm going to cheat a little bit here. I'm just going to grab the one we did before that said find smallest. Oops. I'm going to copy all of it. I'm going to put it down here and just change the name to find largest. All right, so print out the largest array element, the largest array element is still going to be that one. So now, the only thing we've got left is our sum and our average. So I want to call find sum numbers array. Again, I'm getting an error because it has not yet been created. We're going to create that right now. Static, void, that. And again, all I have to do is copy in that code where we, um, where is it? There's our sum and printing it out so that, and again, so I don't get the error right away here. Let's say string out str equals double quote, double quote, and now I'll paste this in. There's that. All right. Well, it doesn't like sum because it's now a local variable. So I'll come in here and say int sum 
equals zero. And I guess I didn't even use an out string in here, so I don't need this. So there's that one. Whoops, I got rid of the wrong one. Oh, I didn't. Get rid of that here and get rid of it here. All right, so that's got my sum. So all that's left is my average. So static void find average. And again, that's just going to be some copying from right here. and put that in here all right average is going to have to be local and i'm going to have to i don't need out string anymore so average is just local so i'm going to say here double avg equals 0, 0.0 and to be honest with you i can just do it here i can just type double right there and then i don't even need that line all right but I do need the sum. Well, what's the problem with that? I don't have the sum. Would you agree with that? How can I handle that? There's a lot of ways. I could have taken the sum I did before and make it a variable. I can do that if I want, right? Or if I want, it's a little bit of overkill, but I could even do this. I can say int sum equals, and I could call it again. Find sum of numbers array. I could do it like that. Now, what doesn't it like? Find sum cannot. Oh, I know what the problem is. It's not returning anything. Okay, so that isn't going to work. Let's make this zero. And we'll do one more thing. All right. We will go in here and we will make. Notice now these variables, I don't need average anymore. I don't need outstring anymore. You can see how this is getting cleaned up. I'm going to take my sum. And I'm going to make it global. Again, that's kind of a cheesy way out of it, but that's what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to say int sum equals zero. But since I want to use it with main, I'm going to have to say static int sum. All right. So how did that change anything? Well, if I come down here, then notice in my sum routine that we did down here someplace, and we'll find it, fill numbers array, sort numbers array, find smallest, sort number descending, find largest, find sum. Okay, there's sum. Now it should be global. Now I shouldn't have any error down here. I did have one too many curlies. All right, but I've got no errors. Okay, and I'm going to save this, and I'm going to run it again. And lo and behold, I get the same kind of results I got before. The array in original order works. The array in, the array in ascending order works. In descending order works. My smallest works. My largest works. My sum works. And my average works. Now, by no means is this a fantastic program. But the idea behind this is it was written so that you would be able to understand what the hell is going on, all right? So what I am going to do is I'm going to literally, between these two that we've done so far, and I'm going to run off a copy of this, all right? I'm going to ask you to type in all three of these. And if you do and you turn them in with your next assignment, that's just an extra 25 points you can get, all right? So I will go and grab this. And I'm going to print out a copy right now for anybody who wants it. it is a, it's late, sorry. So since it's 9.13, let's take a break and come back at 9.30.